question. And they say you are a goddess of money and wealth. To me, you are the source of infinite light. In your Varada Hasta, Bhujraj had gone as far as he could in finding his own faith, in his own trust, but shortly thereafter the astrologer's prediction came true and he found that he had to flee in the night because a king from neighboring place decided that he would come and seize Bhojaraj's kingdom with his children and his dear wife he went into the jungles 
and became what today we would call a refugee. He left and found work as the most menial of places. In the cremation ground is where he found the only work that he could get. In spite of that, he kept his smile. He was always happy and in good spirits. People asked him, O oh King, how is it you're so happy all the time? How? And he said, well, it's not that I'm never sad. I find that when I'm sad, I turn to myself and in my heart, in the seat, in the lotus place of consciousness, in my mind, there is Lakshmi. She is there and she always, like a mother, reminds me, don't be afraid. You see, that's where I get my courage. Well, King Bhojaraj was in fact given all the things that had been removed so ruthlessly from him. He returned to his kingdom. He had the bounty of assets given back to him. The dignity of his throne was returned. But he never forgot that Dhairya Lakshmi, that queenly goddess of courage, was always within him. And he was forever grateful for the lesson that he taught him. No circumstance could ever remove her. Thus, his wife said to him one day, Oh, my dear husband, isn't it true? The greatest battle you ever fought was right within you when you had nothing? He said, yes, my dear one. You seem to have all the answers. And the two lived in bliss for the rest of their lives. So I guess you might say that Lakshmi, seated in her beautiful lotus, flanked by royal elephants with their redemptive waters, cascading gold coins protecting her children. You might say that, Lakshmi, is she about money? I don't know. Hmm. Don't know. Hey, what are you doing? Counting. What are you counting? Money. Money? Why are you counting money? Didn't you hear the story? Not all, some of it. Oh, you need to hear the whole story. Then you'll understand money is not... Can you tell us again? I don't know. I can't tell you the whole story again. You'll have to come another day. Okay. Thank you for attending today's storytelling. It was a pleasure to share this with you. Namaste.
Oh, thank you for joining us. Can you hear us? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, can they hear us? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lisa, do you have a question? Do you have? Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Um, I believe um, some people in the audience did have questions. They were messaging me. Someone was asking if they could know about your costumes and makeup, if there was any meaning behind those. Um, sure. So the costume you know, that I'm wearing right now, it's in, actually it's in pieces. This is a fan and you wrap it around the waist and you actually button it to the trousers. And um, this is designed so that you can see the line of the leg mm -hmm. and you can move. But it looks at the same time similar to uh, a sari in the sense it creates a sense of folds. Um, but it keeps you fairly independent, you can move. Um, and the hair is meant to be back from the face. Um, and in that sense, it's similar to ballet. Mm -hmm. um, Bindi, this dot on the head, represents that seat of consciousness that I talked about for Lakshmi. Uh, when you pray and you meditate, it uh, doesn't matter which religious tradition, if it's Christian or Sufi or Hindu, the heart, when it blossoms with love, there's an ascent. Uh, you ascend, uh, as it were, in your thinking, in your feeling. And so that is commemorated with the bindi, which Indian women wear outside of dance class, uh, as a way to recognize that they are beautiful. And um, that's one of the things I'm teaching our students at the Sutradhar Institute to honor their innate beauty, especially our teen girls, for them to see that being strong and dignified and loving themselves as goddesses, latter-day living goddesses, being good human beings, working hard, honoring themselves, uh, those are lessons that are just being uh, given out all the time at this institute. So the jewelry represents honoring the self. This is a belt, by the way. These are not real gold. Ah. Um, none of this is real gold. Yeah. Good, okay. Okay, so do who else has a question? I was just trying to ask if um, anyone has a question for Anila and Nalima. You can raise, you can ra do a raise your hand or just start talking. Since let's see, you can. I think um, I wanted to, since you were just mentioning the bindi, isn't that related to the third eye? And doesn't it stimulate your third eye? Could you talk about that? No, no it, it's definitely, it doesn't have, no, it has no impact on the third eye, but it represents it symbolically. Oh, it just represents it. Okay, okay. The third eye is something that is, is I think it's uh, not understood as it should be. It really is, um, it comes from within. Uh, it's the eye of perception. Um, it, in the Bible, Jesus says, when thy eye is single, thy whole body shall be filled with light. And the North Indian poet Kabir says, when you take the name of Ram, your whole body is filled with light. So it's a, a question of developing that focus and, and devotion. And also to add to what she's saying, <clears throat> the third eye means that you can see beyond the tangible world. Mm -hmm. And, right. uh, and uh, something that the phenomenal world, 
so to speak. Mm -hmm. So third eye is very important for, for uh, it's part of the awakening of your spiritual self. Oh, Any right. more? I, yeah, I knew a little bit about that. So, um, and can you tell us about the dancing? I think that's where we had the most delay with the video with during the dance. Can you talk about the dances that we saw? Anila wrote the poems in English so that it could bring the the essence or the soul of Sanskrit poems. I'll dance while she's talking. So you can see that what they're doing in the video is what we do in our studios. Then let me let me then um, say Samudra Vasane. Here is a beautiful poem about the uh, Mother Earth. And the poet sees it, sees the waves of ocean. And he says, oh, Mother Earth, those beautiful waves are your fabric. Your sari, your veil, covering your beautiful limbs. Then he goes on to say, the mountains, are the contours of your body, O oh, Mother Earth. I dance, O oh, Mother Earth. I dance, I dance. So you stamp your feet. There's a lot of stamping for the beat. And there's a lot of bending. This is a big, big chokum. This is the regular turnout. There's heel, stamping, toe, stamping, tip of the foot, tracing an outline, pointing when you come up. There are jumps. Um, the accent yes. of the jumps is not to repel the gravity as is done in Western ballet. It is to jump high and accent the downward pull of the earth, mm -hmm. the gravity of the earth. And the rhythms are, um, philosophically, they are in a cyclic pattern, like the clock. And what does that stand for? It is that there is no end. And there is no death, there is no birth, mm. and the life on this phenomenal world so doesn't have a beginning or an end. If she puts Adi Tala, this is eight beat Tala, one, this is how you measure the beat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the one eight, eight, come in. two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> A certain is it seven? Is it called seven eighths beat rhythm that you generally? There are many patterns. There's different. This, yeah. This so was one of the very common one, and then within one set of cycle, uh, there are then cross current rhythms. Like um, I'm just giving you an example. You count in twos, but you put three in each beat. One, 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 two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So when you're doing, now you're going to go count in twos but put in threes. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So 
they are very naughty. These very naughty and uh, uh, takes your breath away and uh, it's a constant uh, give and take between the audience whether you have landed on the first on time or not. It's very important because that one is the beginning of the next cycle. Right. So. Any more questions? Yeah? Do we have some other questions in the audience? Um, some asked me in the chat. A couple people were interested in your makeup and costumes, which you, you talked about your costumes. Um, yeah, so. Uh, in fact, Linda Cato, who's the doll maker, had to leave, but she was especially interested in your costumes. Uh, since she does the doll making and the costumes for dolls, she just presented on Monday night. Um, great. Well, um, t can you tell us about... I mean, some oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Anila, if you had something to share. No, I was going to say, if anybody has... If anybody has a, you know, further questions, which are, it's kind of hard to answer in this forum, uh, just drop an email, and you know we can answer uh, or call on the phone. Generally, generally speaking, the oldest garment that has come through all the way till twentieth and twenty-first century is unstitched, long, five meters to nine. nine meters of yard, which is folded around in at least 100 different ways around your body. Oh, wow. And I am told in many parts of the, of the uh, country, uh, women did not wear uh, a blouse. They just had a little body piece and they would have this long nine yards to five yards of material. And, uh, uh, and imagine weavers had a heyday. <laughs> they would yeah. weave and each part of the country came up with their own designs and with their own patterns and own colors. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They are still there so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, great. And the eye makeup is, is to accent the eyes. So, yeah. Because I should be dancing yeah. as much as the rest else. of the limbs, yes. Okay. And so. Mina just wrote thank you for the program. Um, and we had some others in the chat. Thank you for the program. So can you tell us about uh, Sutra Dahara, what you have coming up for summer? I know you're very active with your students. Yeah, um, well, we have um, a virtual gallery that's going to be going up um, with painters, dancers from all over the world. And they're going to be um, uh, basically uh, working through pandemic uh, experiences to release sorrow, to release the feeling of confinement and the heaviness of grief. Um, and there's a special um, art program that we created for that. So once that goes up, uh, then we're going to go into our summer camp mode and we do all kinds of arts activities because at this institute, we really don't see dance as an, as an isolated form. Um, it's connected to these mythologies, it's connected to rhythm, it's connected to visual art. You know. So what we do is we take an epic uh, called Ramayana, but that's just a bone structure. And we make it relevant, contextualize the characters, and how would men, women, children, or that world be relevant for us today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and everything under the issues that confront us today are open. And each child writes their own book. 
and so they have a, not only a show but a book fair and kids do their own own interpretation of uh, of the epic it highlights the heroic the hero uh, does what the hero is selfless the hero is compassionate the hero is courageous what about a woman heroine well what is she courageous how does she show her metal in battle so these you know we really go deep for the teenagers we create a special class for them where we do socratic discussions to talk about gender we talk about race uh, we talk about things that are very pertinent today uh, last year um, right before the pandemic we right after the pandemic sorry we ended up working through pandemic issues emotionally through visual art and then black lives matter came up and my teen dancers were marching into Washington, coming back, fired up, and they wanted to talk about, well, where is social justice in the place of compassion? How do we uh, talk about peace in the Ramayana and peace in, um, you know, the Bhagavad Gita? And we have, we have these really burning problems. So about, that came into our work, um, but yeah. About three years ago, there was this big thing in the news that people from these countries cannot come into the U.S. So we took on, we created a little 12-year-old boy, became the visa officer, and everybody else said, made their own passports. And then they said, we want to go to India. They said, you oh, but you can't. Okay, um, if we become birds, we don't need passport. Mm. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful, the kids were happy and they came to know that when you are free like a bird, you don't need these pieces of paper to tell you because the countries are people-made. The universe is for every human being. Yeah. So, yeah. it was it's a long, it was a tall order. <laughs> yeah. Right, I've seen a, the symbolism of uh, um, that border, you know, the bu butterflies pay no mind to the, to the borders that humans put on places, the butterflies are, recognize that the universe, you know, we're all part of the universe. So can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, we're also, yeah. I, um, we're also going to be doing um, the uh, goddess class final performance. Uh, we have a class that's especially for women who are 40 and above and um, it is working through a Buddhist, um, an ancient Buddhist poem that's the first literary exercise by women in the world. And it's just uh, incredible to work through one of those poems with dance. And we talk about the meaning of what this woman experienced. Where did she find her peace? How did she overcome obstacles? And women who are in the class really begin to connect with what that feels like in their lives. So they're going to be performing this dance um, and they're so happy. So I think that'll be up on our website. All of this should be up on the website. Well, can um, you show us a little, I'm definitely in that over 40 club and I I would be curious to know what kind of movement would you be doing with, with that group? If you could give us an example. Well, you have to, an example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you have what, to do pronoun. Um, it was something that what inspired this work was two things. One was the 6th century BC women authored poem. It's in the world literature, it's one of the first anthology by women. And, and it was their personal liberation. That's what all the poems are about. But the second one was I went into Tibetan mandalas and the mandalas start 
conceiving graphic lines as the, the universe that we create around us. And the, ultimately when we come back to us, it's the glowing third eye. So the first one is the square, then the circle, then triangle, and then finally the center of this. Because uh, a dot does not have, it's self-contained. So, so, so created movement, beautiful movement that they walk through and in their heads, it's a, yeah. Wonderful. So these are some okay, of the let's do it now, too. Yeah. Great. Oh, well, sounds wonderful. Does that answer your question? Or? Yeah, I think if we don't have any, do we have any final questions? Pam wrote, just wrote in the chat that um, she would love to see more of the dance. Or like to see more of the dance. Uh, this was lovely. Thank you. So. <laughs> I'm trying to do just that so that you can get more movement. Right. Definitely keep you fit <laughs> and limber. Right. Thank you. Great. Well, this Let's all bow to Mother Earth now. <laughs> It's been wonderful. Oh, Mother This is to receive the light which is above our head and heart. You bring that light to yourself. May our two eyes see beyond. And may this light fill our heart. And oh, Mother Earth, in India, this is the way to say something that's very precious. Eyes are considered very precious in, in Indian uh, storytelling and in greeting. So you touch something and you touch your eyes. Generally, you go into the, into the temples and you touch the entrance to the door and it means you are precious. Right. Okay? Well, that's that's fantastic. This has been so lovely, Nalima and Nanila. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. It's been great. I and I I thank love you. seeing all of your performances over the years. You've been in our festivals. We hope to invite your students back as well. So thank you so much. And uh, thank you to everyone. Yes.